Hello one and all and welcome. This is the first Monday Night Raw following the Royal Rumble. And that means that this is the first Raw officially on the road to WrestleMania. Of course, what better way to start off the show tonight than with a highlight package of the night before. A video package begins raw highlighting everything we saw the night before at the Royal Rumble, including the Royal Rumble match, the Triple Threat World Heavyweight title match, and the Tag Team title match, and the Divas title match, uh, the Divas title match and the Tag Team title, uh, their next storylines will not be talked about on this episode of Raw. There's just too much going on on this episode of Raw with the new authority figure. So I pushed those that stuff back to SmackDown. So, yeah. And you will hear about it, just not tonight. So let's get to the opening segment. The opening segment is John, the announcers welcoming us to the show and talking about Brock Lesnar retaining the WWE World Heavyweight title, and they say that we will hear from Brock Lesnar later tonight in this broadcast as Brock is in the building, and they promise that tonight will be a very big event. And to call your friends right now, because the huge announcement from Vince McMahon about the new authority figure of the WWE happens right now. As here comes Vince McMahon, and Vince McMahon reiterates stuff that he said at the Royal Rumble last night, like he made a mistake with the last authority figure, that he should have put somebody in power that could defend themselves and would not be taken advantage of, advantage of by rogue employees who don't respect authority. And that's why he carefully has spent the last two months Picking the new authority figure for the WWE, and the new authority figure is, or should I say, authority figures. Vince says, goes to introduce the authority figures, and as he says, the new authority figures are, I mean, the new authority figure of the WWE is. Hunter and Stephanie make their way out to the ring, and everybody thinks that Vince put back, put his son-in-law and Stephanie back in charge, because, but do the math. Does Stephanie and Triple H fit the description of being authority figures that won't be pushed around by employees that don't respect authority? Yeah. But... To show my style of, uh, to show that maybe I take a page out of Vince Russo's playbook, swerve, let's do a swerve, as Vince McMahon is looking at it like, we're, and we're wondering, wait, Vince doesn't know why they're here. They're not the authority figure. And then Vince goes on the mic, gets on the mic and says, what are you both doing here? And Stephanie says, Dad, we're so happy that you chose to give us back our pa back power. And we will prove to you that WWE is nothing without the authority. Without me and Triple H. And Vince says, Well, Stephanie, you had your opportunity. And you, and you, you had your opportunity. Fact of the matter is, you're not the people I chose to be authority, to be the new authority figure of the WWE. He is who the new authority figure is. The man called Sting is the new authority figure of the WWE. And you're gonna say, wait, isn't that gonna screw up Sting's appearances? I believe in the WWE now 
having a authority figure that's not there every week and picks and you pick and choose when he's there, maybe when you need a boost in ratings, that'll be when he's there. But fact of the matter, and fact of the matter is, that's when I'm going to make Sting. Sting will be more of a Jack Tunney than an Eric Bischoff, a Teddy Long, or a Vicky Guerrero. You know, somebody who's there every week, or even a Triple H and Stephanie. This also means that Triple H and Stephanie are not in power. And Vince leaves with a smile on his face, but before he does, he turns around and says, Triple H, Stephanie, now that is what's best for business. Triple H and Stephanie are livid, but the one thing that does not happen is Sting does not say a word. And Sting does not even enter the ring. He stays on the ramp, but it is official that Sting is a new authority figure of the WWE. Now we move to the first match, CJ Parker versus Cesaro. I mean, you can't give a guy hard match, uh, matches. Giving a guy a job match once in a while, not a bad, not a bad thing. And that's what this match is for Cesaro, just to give him a, an easy win, to keep him with good momentum going into WrestleMania. Now this is where Daniel Bryan comes in. Daniel Bryan comes out to the ring, following a commercial, of course, and says. And talks about how last year he got one of the worst injuries of his career, and he talks, and he even mentions the time when his, um, I don't remember the exact injury, but he had, he had uh, sustained an injury during a match where his eye was swollen shut, and then he had sight issues following the match or something to that effect. I really don't remember, but I know what happened. I'm pretty sure the match was against uh, Ta Takahashi Morishima in ROH. He mentions it. He does not mention ROH by name. He mentions the match and he mentions the injury. But he says that the neck injury he sustained was worse than that. The neck injury he sustained last year almost ended his career, but he came back because of the people. And he said that he never lost the WWE World Heavyweight title. He never lost it. And he deserves an opportunity to get it back. Because if it was up to him, he would have defended it. He would have defended it even if... Because he... Even if he was injured. Because he never goes down without a fight. And I will, and Daniel's like, and Daniel continues to say he will not, his path will not be halted again. He is a hundred percent and will become WWE World Heavyweight Champion again. And then he ends with the trademark, yes, yes, yes. I apologize, the first was... Actually, Daniel walking to the the last seg the previous segment was Daniel walking to the ring, that took us to commercial break, and then we got Daniel in the ring cutting the promo. And then they talk about this is where they talk about Roman Reigns in the Royal Rumble, winning the Royal Rumble and getting the opportunity at WrestleMania. Uh, I'm gonna touch on it now that I accidentally I did not realize this segment actually existed because I split up make I. Uh, forgot about this segment and I only say this because there's another segment where the announcers talk about uh, I'll just put this way this was meant to be there as was another segment later in the show where the announcers also talk about Roman Reigns and now we go in Dolph Ziggler against Luke Harper a shocker because nobody expects not only Luke Harper to defend the title, but nobody expects Dolph Ziggler to walk away with the Intercontinental title. But he does. And the match ends. Solid match between Dolph and Luke Harper. The reason why I put the title back on Dolph is because I don't believe Dolph can be a main eventer. In my opinion. Or based on this game. 
then we move to the segment. Dolph cuts a promo on Daniel Bryan. Um, look, this would be where I would ask Dolph to tap into true emotion and say, "Do you, how do you feel that Daniel Bryan feels? How do you feel? How would you feel if Daniel Bryan got a title shot before you did?" You've been here, you've been working your ass off, etc., etc. And I would tell him, I would give him the direction of where to go, and I would tell him to tap into real emotion and cut a word, maybe a work shoot. And I would, I would, the one talking point I would give him is saying that he got injured, he fought for the, he fought, but the, and he fought even when he wasn't 100%. But he lost. His title was stolen from him, and he never got the chance to get it back. And he never complained. He was a good little soldier, and put his tail between his legs, and fought to get his title back. But he still has been put behind the eight ball, and never given his chance. And... And that makes Daniel Bryan come out. And this has Daniel and Dolph going, uh, trading words in the ring. And the one, uh, and, you know, Dolph would go in and tell, look Daniel, um, look Daniel in the face and say, we both, we both had our title ripped away from us. Only I didn't complain about it. And I did something about it. And that would be when Dolph slaps Daniel. And this happens. Um, if it would have helped if you've been able to see it. It says Dolph attacks Daniel Bryan. Dolph whacks Daniel. I mean, uh, sorry. He slaps Daniel. That catches Daniel off balance. And then attacks Daniel Bryan. Leaving him down prone on the mat after hitting him with a zigzag. Yes, if you're wondering, this will lead to a heel turn from Dolph Ziggler. Because I think Dolph, Dolph is a hundred times better as a heel. As the announcers would say, I would have the announcers... This would be more so for the announcers as the announce, I would have the announcers plug the idea that this... The depth... Um, the women's division... The divas division has not been this healthy or this com competitive in years. And that this... A win here by one of these divas could lead to them getting a uh, moving higher up in the divas division and move one step closer to getting a title shot. Natalia, of course, beats Layla. Um, this wasn't supposed to be here. Um, so ignore the Roman Reigns segment. I meant to cut that, but, because I went into that, I, w I was going to go one way, but then I decided to go another way, and I never took the, I never took the segment out, so ignore that segment. Uh, Paige and AJ are backstage, they're discussing what happened at Royal Rumble, which if you don't know, the match ended in a draw due to interference from both Paige and Brie, and this will lead to a continuation of the feud between the Bella Twins and Paige and AJ. And this is when Paige asks, asks AJ for a title shot. And AJ accepts. So this is gonna be this is gonna get interesting between the two of them as it will be interesting to see how I go with the Bellas how I get the Bellas back in the picture after what happened at the Royal Rumble. Now we move backstage out to the parking lot. You know, the previous segment was in the locker room. This is in the parking lot. As Triple H and Stephanie catch up with Vince, who is leaving, and they and they just ask Vince one question. Why would you give Sting power? And Vin, all Vince says is, you had your chance, and you disappointed me when you lost at Survivor Series. I put a whole lot of pressure on you, and you failed I will never give you power back. 
until you prove me wrong. That you're not failures. And now Vince gets in his car, and that leaves Triple H and Tiffany by themselves. And they are pissed off, but it looks like they might have a plan to get power back. Now we move back into the ring. Eric Rowan against the Big Show. I'm basically in the pro in where WWE is with Eric Rowan. I I think Eric Rowan is somewhat talented, but I don't have anything for him. I don't have any idea of how to use him, so I'm just making him. Uh, he's in the same position as he is with WWE. The Big Show, on the other hand, I never turned him heel because I feel like he's turned heel far too many times. But I haven't. Uh, the the point of the point of it is, I haven't turned him heel yet. I haven't turned him heel yet. I will, just not right now. That's all I gotta say. He will sooner or later. Now, um, following that match, Bray Wyatt pops up on this uh, on the Titan Tron and cuts a cryptic promo. I would I would not give Bray any direction. I would let him cut the promo, just a cryptic promo with hidden meaning, hidden meanings. And, you know, just, I would let Bray be Bray for this week. You know, would part of it maybe have something to do with him beating Dean Ambrose? And, you know, where he goes from here? Yes, that would be the idea, the topic of the promo. But what he says in the promo would be completely up to him. Now we move to Lana and Rusev. We move back to the ring after a commercial break. Lana and Rusev come out. They get their heat, blah, 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 blah. Lana grabs the mic and starts talking, saying, The problem is, Americans just view size as the be-all, end-all. It doesn't matter how you use it. Um, in Russia, you're only as, go as good as... The bigger you are, the higher standard you're held to. And that is why Rusev is the superior athlete and the hero of the Russian Federation. Because he isn't all talk. He backs it up. Unlike Ryback, ha Ryback has not proven anything in this in the double WWE, in the WWE. Rusev has proven why Americans are failures. I mean, uh, Rusev has proven why Americans are failures, and Ryback has done nothing but help our case. And that leads to Mark Henry actually interrupting him. Because who better than the world's strongest man, the former two-time Olympian, coming out, I mean, uh, the former Olympian coming out and interrupting him to defend the, a case of Americans not backing up their size. Meaning, you know, like, I mean, uh, you know, Ryback, Kali, uh, Mark Henry, etc., etc. People just being all talk because of how big they are. They don't have to back things, back it up in the ring. They can mail it in. Rusev doesn't know the meaning of the word mailing it in. Mark comes out and says, you know, the old. I mean, I really didn't put too much thought into Mark's promo here. I would just have him interrupt. Because he cuts a promo here. <laughs> and it, I would have him cut the traditional Patriot promo of, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a two time, I'm an Olympian. I've never backed down from a fight. And I didn't back down the last time we worked. You know, I didn't back down. I've never backed down from a fight in my life. And I don't plan to start now. You don't like it here, Lana. If you two don't like it here, then leave it. Nobody is keeping you here. 
But if you're willing to fight, put your money where your mouth is and let's go. And Mark and Rusev lock, lock horns, but Rusev, but Mark Henry was disqualified when Rusev, I mean when Ryback, excuse me, too many R's, when Ryback ran down and attacked Rusev. And this leads to a big brawl between Rusev and Ryback that, uh, um, that spills to the outside and spills backstage. But it's finally broken up as Lana pull, uh, by Lana. Lana tells Rusev he's not worth it, get away from him. And security and, um, um, after it spills backstage and the camera finally catches up to them, Lana pills Rusev off, security gets in between them, and separates them as we go to a commercial. I mean, as we go, f um, excuse me, then the camera moves to somewhere else backstage and, sees, and we see John Cena walking. Now John Cena makes his way out to the ring after the commercial break, after we come back, and Cena cuts a promo on last night saying he came that close to beating Brock Lesnar but he did it he came up short and then he you know he said you know the future if you're the future you have to you know he cuts he basically cuts a promo about last night and then mixes in that you know people claim to be the future he's still the measuring stick of this company and if you want to be the future you have to go through him and that brings out Seth Rollins, and Seth Rollins starts picking on Cena, saying that Cena isn't as good as he once was, he's, he's a failure, he said he was going to beat Brock Lesnar, he, he disappointed Ric Flair, he said he was going to beat Brock Lesnar, but he didn't, he said he was going to walk out with the fi as a 15-time champion, but he didn't. And Cena points out Seth Rollins didn't either, and Seth says that the only reason why he didn't walk out with the title is because of Randy Orton. If Randy Orton never stuck it, if Randy Orton's music never played, then he wouldn't have gotten distracted, and he wouldn't have been thinking about if Randy Orton was going to come out or not. Randy Orton is the reason why Seth Rollins didn't walk out with the title, because Randy Orton is jealous, but he and he's too much of a coward to show his face. And, and Cena goes on, you know, and Seth then brings it back to Cena and says, that shows how much the W, this shows how much this company has changed. One, one, ten years ago, you and Cena, you and Orton were the prospects of the company, were the future of the company, and now you're a failure and Orton's a coward. My... How times have changed. Seth, you're a punk. You're a punk with an ego problem. And I'll be more than happy to bring you back down to earth and slap and show you. You might be the future, but the future is it now. After a heated confrontation, once again, to further intensify the feud between Seth and Cena, we move to the next contest, which is Dean Ambrose versus Kofi Kingston. This match is, in reality, a match to get Ambrose a win after a hard-fought match last night. Because Ambrose did, in fact, lose the feud to Bray Wyatt, losing the I Quit match at the Royal Rumble to give Bray the momentum going into his next feud. Ambrose had... And this is just to give Ambrose some momentum back. Um, the announcers, this goes, we go to the announce desk, and we have the announcers discuss it. Uh, Michael Cole is told that on SmackDown, Goldust and Stardust will be holding an open challenge and where they will put the tag team titles on the line against any tag team in the WWE. Sort of like they did the week before the Rumble, only 
only it was not a tag team title match when they versed the Headbangers. Now we move to the next thing. Miz and Mizdow backstage arguing because Miz and Mizdow were in the ring at the Royal Rumble and the Royal, um, they were in the Royal Rumble at the same time. Miz, uh, Mizdow could have stopped the Miz from getting eliminated, but he didn't. And Miz is pissed off. And Miz said, and Miz tells Mizdow, you have one more chance. If you slip up again, you're fired, and you could go back to being a nobody. Like you were before I got my hands on you. Do you want that? Well, either, either make your decision, because you're supposed to be my personal assistant and not out for yourself. And now, much like the backstage segment, I want to say, last week with Christian, when Christian was preaching to Mizdow to stand up for himself and, and that Mizdow is more talented than the Miz, Mizdow is left to himself thinking, what is, what is it he's going to do? What is it that he's going to do? And then we move out to the ring with Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar. And Paul Heyman... I just love doing this, so I'm going to do it. Paul Heyman starts with, My name is Paul Heyman. And I am the advocate to the reigning, defending, undisputed WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Brock Lesnar. And at the Royal Rumble, my client proved why he is the beast when he took brought Seth Rollins and John Cena's best and gave it right back to him he chewed that he chewed them up and spit them out like they were pieces of meat Brock Lesnar will never this is not the, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Brock Lesnar is the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. This is Brock's title to lose. And he will hold it as long as Brock wants to hold it. And Cena and Rollins can argue who is the face of the WWE but there's no doubt in anybody's mind that after the Royal Rumble the face of the WWE is Brock Lesnar and that young upstart kid Roman Reigns who won the Royal Rumble? Roman, you ain't ready to be in the ring with the beast. You still have years before you even measure up to Brock Lesnar. You can't beat my client. You ain't even. And you aren't even man enough to be here tonight. And stand face to face with my client. Roman. We'll see you at Wrestlemania. Or maybe when you're man enough to actually be in the ring with us. And now we move to the announcers. Oh, now we move to the announcers. Um, who discussed that Roman Reigns was actually here, but was called out of the arena due to a family emergency. They did not disclose any of the information, but Ro and they, they do say that Roman will be here on SmackDown. And may be here on SmackDown, but will definitely be back next week. To talk about um, 
what Paul Heyman just said. Unfortunately, this match that was the main event crapped out and damaged what was a good show or what could have been a better show. I did really good with this show. This show was a little long. Look, I'm going to be doing a show, I mean, a video later on this week. I just want to talk about this quick. And it's not going to be about a show. I mean, an episode. It's not going to be about Raw, SmackDown, main event, a pay per view. It's going to be about this in general. And it's going to be about. Uh, just in general. You will find out the topic when I post the video. Thanks for joining me. Till next time. Hope you enjoyed.